Hello awesome folks. I hope you're having a great day today. Today I'm taking a look at the second book uh, in the Throne Ascendancy prequel about this character that was introduced in the Heir to the Empire a trilogy that I've gone back and reread, which I've never read before. Uh, I, I, if you recall, I have read the first uh, trilogy um, when I was in high school and I owned by my dad and I knocked out about 20 or so other Star Wars novels that were contemporary to it in the early 90s but this stuff wasn't published at the time when I was reading it uh, so I picked it up after going back and buying my own copies of the first uh, Thrawn trilogy for you folks I'm knocking that out and now I did this one uh, this one is about 410 pages long it took me about uh, four days for, for me to knock this out do i was knocking out about 100 pages a day it's called uh, greater good and, and then the last one is very long it's like more than 550 pages long and it has sequelitis unfortunately uh, and that's where the the ending part of a trilogy or the longer you go in the series the longer the books take right because the seller wasn't cutting themselves down right now so now you get like more dialogue more descriptions more characters it takes a lot longer uh, to read and unfortunately that last book has these sequel is still pointing at least uh, six days for me to knock out this is an oversized book uh, the reason why i blazed through it so fast uh, is because it's uh, uh, i was going typically i would go through you know something like this double size about two minutes a page roughly um, and or in a novel size 20 minutes 20 pages a minute and said for every half hour read, uh, and said so that's fine uh, but this one I was actually going to fill about 25 uh, pages uh, and a half hour I was blowing through it so I could get about 100 pages in about two hours or so typically a little more like you know uh, this one last night I did 98 pages and it was you know and it was two hours and ten minutes so it was, it was a, a little longer for you folks and then sometimes I knock out ones that were a little bit bigger than uh, 400 pages by taking out like so if it was 440 for example that was one of the novels uh, and I would take I would divide that up, up into roughly 100 plus a chapter however many that was typically around 110 pages uh, but I would just do 100 plus a chapter whichever that ended up to be uh, for folks and then that would typically be closer to about two and a half hours uh, rather than two hours that typically dedicate through it in, in order to knock it out quickly I've been surprised by how fast I've been knocking it out all right uh, so this again the Thrawn trilogy sort of opens up the the Star Wars universe, uh, extended universe, and so forth. And even though it's not canon anymore, it's great stuff. Uh, a lot of, and it's a lot of great people to get get it start uh, and to kick off and so forth. So I like it. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at my re second review of the, of the of the novel and my first re read through of Greater Good by by Timothy Zahn. Now one of the interesting things about this new series um, and uh, the extended universe and so forth is that they got a really big name in Timothy Zahn. He was an established name, had lots of fans, uh, and had, had some some great selling books before this, right? That's unlike some other series uh, that were done uh, for IPs that started out, like Battletech, for example, uh, started out with authors in the, also in the sci-fi series that didn't have publishing credit or maybe had a couple of books to their name, but they were just pretty rich, pretty new uh, and stuff. Uh, the the fantasy stuff by TSR, like the Forgotten Realms, Douglas Niles, and R.A. Salvatore had never written before, before they read and had best-selling novels. Kick off the series, um, or, or uh, the Dragonland series uh, that started everything. Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman never written uh, anything before or together, so, so they launched that best selling series uh, and so forth. So it's very interesting to see Timothy's that the Star Wars really uh, started off with a big thing. I think they, they have classics that are heavily wrapped, you know. Uh, when I was in Fairfield, Connecticut at Fairfield University, one of my co-workers uh, was talking about her love of the movies of Star Wars, and I suggested she start with the, the three Thrawn stuff that I went back and reread for you folks a few weeks ago, uh, and she, she did a deep dive, loved it, right, and so forth. So it's beloved and so forth. But the prequels, right, aren't as good to me. They're still fast, right? I still like them. Right, I mean, this was only a four-day read. Uh, but, so I like that, but they're they're not as good. You can see this book here is divided up into different colored sections. Uh, the ones uh, that are black are flashbacky, uh, flashbacky pages uh, of, of the themes of, of those, and, and they're not set, and so forth. Um, so, it's, so it's got some flashbacks and then some pretty cool stuff, too. So it moves back and forth in time uh, and and so forth. So I'm giving this probably, although I gave you know you know some of his works from the first trilogy nines uh, and stuff like that. This one I'm probably just giving it a seven too. It's fun. 
it's good, but it has some of those prequel issues and so forth. So we'll see what happens when he sticks a landing. So basically what's happening in this is that the key character of Grand Admiral Thrawn in uh, in the introducing the heir to the Empire, which is, which is named after him, uh, is a member of the Chiss, which is a non-human civilization. And he has the Grand Admiral, he's, he's the only non-human in, in, to, to advance to that rank in the Empire. So you know that since that would be good, since of the non-human bias uh, that the Empire had for its members and soldiers and such, right? So that's that's a key part of that, right? So you know he's good, and he's a brilliant tactician. He's the best. The rebellion thinks that they had uh, taken him out. Uh, unfortunately, they had not, uh, and so forth and so forth. There's a, there's a big giant cast of characters uh, from this, my favorite, Tamara J, who's introduced in the first book, um, so forth. Uh, and there's a lot of big name characters that are introduced. And this one also has a big name of introduced characters, although now it's, it's in, it's in uh, the Chiss Ascendancy, which is in the, the chaos of the area that we're introduced to. Uh, so anyway, so basically, uh, we're finding out more and more about Chiss, uh, other characters. M many of them are in Chiss too, like members of his family, political stuff and political drama, that sort of thing. But, so that's basically what's happening. It reminds me a little bit of Crown Society, his description of it, like like like, like the prequels uh, from uh, Ari Salvatore, from from his Trist Origin series. Their families, they have rankings. Some of them are high, some of them are in the top level, and they have high members on the of administration, and so forth. Um, then there are a second le lesser families, the forty families, or that middle ones that are still have good stuff for them and, and good things going on, but aren't as high qualified as the top eight, right? And all the families are sort of in an order, and they're constantly vying for each other and between each other, uh, and and so forth. And that sort of reminds me of what's happening in the Justice Agency, just sort of as an FYI and so forth. Up as there you are. Uh, so that's sort of what's happening uh, in this prequel novel. Uh, I'm giving a seven two. It's four hundred pages long. I loved it. It was great stuff. Taking, taking a back look at this. So there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read this? If, you, if so, what do you think about it? As a reminder, I keep my review spoiler free, so we didn't do a deep dive uh, into what's happening, and I couldn't do a deep dive in the first couple of chapters to get you caught up on how to make spoilers for the first one. So I just didn't do that uh, with you folks. Uh, but so there you are. Uh, I, I hope, that you, again, just pop, post your thoughts and comments about this, uh, about what you think about it, and whether or not you agree with my 7 out of 10. For your hooks, as a reminder, this channel's name is The Worst Thing About New Books, which is a quote by a French philosopher named Jacques Joubert, who said that the worst thing about new books was that he kept us from reading the old ones. And this is definitely an older work, right? That's decades ago uh, and heavily influential. Right, it's a passion of this show, unlike you, so those older works. Uh, so that's where that, that comes from. Uh, so if you enjoyed this review, why not hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and share it with your folks. And if you're feeling you know, frisky, you can even hit that bell, right, and so forth. Uh, there's going to be a lot more of these reviews this fall. And then finally, I want to thank you so much just for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video because we all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me, that's incredibly humbling. And I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.